and um, welcome to the Cyber Skills uh, induction session. Um, a number of you, I presume, are joining the room at this point in time or beginning to join the room. Um, so, um, so welcome to the Cyber Skills induction session. Just checking, folks, should I see people joining this room or will I proceed? They're, they're still joining. Okay, thanks, Jackie. If, some, if somebody can let me know, I'm not seeing numbers coming into the room when we're um, when we proceed. Yeah, you can see it in the participants and the attendees. As, as a panelist, I don't think I can. So I can only see the, the other panelists. But, uh, welcome, folks, and uh, you're hopefully in the right place. This is the Cyber Skills uh, induction uh, session. So, there should be a number of you joining over the course of the next few minutes. And so, we'll we'll give it a couple of minutes for to give people the time to uh, jump into the room. Um, and uh, I hope you're quite excited about this. Um, your your studies over the course of the next few months. It's uh, something new, innovative, really exciting. I'll be talking a little bit about this evening. Uh, I'll also be explaining who I am and briefly um, in relation to the projects. And we'll be introducing uh, the main, um, let's say, project coordination team uh, on the MTU side. Um, so uh, we look forward to uh, you um, joining the program. So if uh, somebody can give me a, a green light when they, they think the room is full enough, I'll, I'll get started. Uh, on uh, the initial overview of uh, cyber skills. <clears throat> I'd say we have most people now, Sean. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jackie. So, uh, again, welcome, welcome to the Cyber Skills Induction Evening. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is, uh, as I said, a really exciting project. Um, I hope you're very excited about your uh, future learning that's going to occur over the course of the next uh, year uh, and more immediately over the course of the next few months. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Sean McSweeney. I'm the head of the Department of Computer Science at MTU. Okay, so I'm giving you this induction overview uh, in lieu of uh, Professor Donna O'Shea. And I'll introduce who she is if you're not aware of who she is until this point in time. Uh, we'll be covering uh, a welcome and some of the essential information um, that you you need to know uh, to be effective as a student in this in your particular pathway and whatever pathway you've chosen on this. And I'll also give you a, a little bit of context in where cyber skills came from and what the intention here is. So, uh, cyber skills as well is closely related to another entity or organisation you may or may not be aware of. Uh, called Cyber Ireland. So this is Ireland Cyber Security Cluster. The intention of Cyber Ireland is to bring a collective voice to industry representing the, the varied, in terms of size, scale and nature, uh, cyber security companies within the state. Um, and it, it emerged um, out of MTU, but it's certainly grown beyond that and um, has you know, representation across all the four corners of Ireland. And indeed, as an organisation, interacts with all the higher education institutions in the country um, with a, a vested interest in cyber security of which uh, MTU, UL, uh, UCD and uh, TU uh, Dublin are uh, you know four main um, uh, partners there in terms of that activity. So uh, out of Cyber Ireland then uh, it became quickly apparent that there's a you know a skill shortage and the Cyber Ireland ran a survey in 2020 and the earlier indications have indicated this as certainly a requirement as well, but the, the 2020 survey indicated that 48% of physicians, cyber security positions uh, are unfilled. And uh, a number of the Cyber Island partners, the enterprise partners had come back and indicated that they're having difficulties in filling these positions. Uh, you as students in cyber skills are the folks that we hope uh, will fill many of these vacancies. Um, in a lot of cases, these positions actually have um, you know, legacy skill sets that are available within the state, but they haven't been retooled to cybersecurity, okay? Uh, thus, the thought process started to emerge that we needed as a collective grouping 
uh, UL, TU Dublin, uh, UCD, um, and MTU, uh, initially as the collective grouping of, of academic partners, we needed a means by which to deliver um, uh, more industry-focused programs, okay? So an industry-focused and flexible uh, modules and learning, okay? So all, each of the, the four core institutions uh, already have uh, a number of industry programs, but we needed more, okay? So we needed something that was, uh, was closer to industry, could be more agile, um, and indeed we could uh, look at modes of delivery that are even beyond what we currently do. Okay, so uh, any of you familiar, uh, certainly, and I, I can only speak about MTU rather than, let's say, UL and TU Dublin and uh, UCD, but any of you familiar with MTU will know that we run uh, a large number of online programs already. Cyber skills takes this further in terms of uh, asynchronous delivery and in terms of the flexibility with which you can take a program, okay? So those academic institutions, along with CCI, which is Commonwealth Cyber Initiative, um, you know, which is closely connected to Virginia Tech, um, came together as the academic entities. And we uh, also clearly interacted with uh, the Regional Skills Forum and Cyber Ireland, as well as plugging into the, the core research centers in this area, Confirm, Lero, and Connect, and bringing uh, as well, of course, the, the industry partners that put a, a major focus is uh, on cybersecurity, of which many of you are, are from those, um, uh, those enterprise partners. And we brought them together to create something that's new, more focused on industry and, and thus emerge cyber skills. So the intention here is to create, empower, and facilitate cybersecurity education um, across the state that is very much focused on current and future uh, emerging cybersecurity needs and helps to build the base that's already there in Ireland, the very, very strong cybersecurity base that we have already. Uh, as, as many of you are well aware, we are already very much internationally competitive, um, but we can do more. We can always move forward and we can always improve in terms of what we can do and how far we can take this. So then, uh, in order to, to build this uh, as part of cyber skills, uh, there's the first um, uh, integrated cyber security range, okay? So cyber range for the academic institutions, okay? So th this is something radical and new and has an ambition of eventually building, um, you know, a fully integrated national cyber security range where Ireland could be a, a world leader in terms of the types of uh, activity we can do. And we're, we're certainly a number of steps along the way uh, in that activity. Critically as well for um, cybersecurity, the NIST NICE framework provides an essential framework um, to identify uh, specific industry roles in cybersecurity, um, the, the nuances of some of that, those roles, and the key skills and capabilities, expectations in those roles in cybersecurity. And cyber skills, uh, unlike a lot of, uh, let's say, academic modules that exist currently in academic programs, directly maps the learning content into the NIST NICE framework. So it makes it, uh, it, it's much closer and much easier for industry partners then to uh, identify exactly what skill sets uh, individual modular content or individual learning content is giving um, their potential either upskilling employees or, or, or uh, people who potentially are on this and, and looking to move into those, those enterprise partners. And as well as that, as I mentioned earlier on, a key component of cyber skills is the flexible mode of delivery. Okay, so this is really important that, you know, it, it's not just, uh, and you'll have this in a number of the modules that you will sit in on over the course of the next few months, it's not just online delivery. And, and, and again, uh, it, it's, it's important that you distinguish this from a MOOC, okay? So this is not, the intention is not and never will be to deliver MOOC-like courses or mass uh, online courses. This is tailored, focused, uh, and is uh, very specific to a skill set. So you have the flexibility of that normal synchronous online delivery component, as well as an asynchronous component to delivery. So it allows you to uh, digest the content when and where you can, um, to work around your busy work schedule, um, and to 
um, you know, succeed in your, your intentions uh, for your career in cybersecurity. Um, so there are unique learner pathways as well. Okay, so uh, rather than uh, in, in all of our academic institutions, we have to take a, a broad approach in, uh, let's say, a, a traditional um, MSc level nine type of offerings or the offerings that we look at. Cyber skills looks at uh, the, the modularity in terms of individual learning components that you can uh, combine together to provide you with a unique pathway um, through your learning journey uh, in this particular initiative. Three of the, the pathways that are built at the moment, uh, of which you are a, an incoming student on one of these, are the Certificate in uh, Secure Network Operations, uh, which fulfills a specific type of role in, in NetOps activities. That's a level eight. So um, something that probably is important for me to introduce now is what's the distinction between a level eight and a level nine program? Okay, so um, uh, for those of you who are not uh, Irish citizens or used to the Irish system, uh, a, a level eight program is um, uh, a, the equivalent of a, an honours level bachelor uh, degree. Okay, so that's uh, what we consider in Ireland level eight. And a level nine program uh, will be a program that uh, the modular content or the learning content is at the level uh, of either a postgraduate diploma um, or a MSc. Okay, so that's uh, the, the modules are at that level. Okay, so uh, the second pathway here then is a level nine program, which is a certificate in secure software development. Okay, and that, that the intention there is to build a better developer, to build a, a developer can, who can understand and improve and enhance teams and development teams to ensure that the software that's built is reliable and uh, robust um, in terms of its, its operation. And then the third current pathway is a certificate in secure systems architecture. And this is more the kind of global view uh, of uh, the network infrastructure. As you can see, the modular content of that reflects it where you're looking at uh, information systems architecture and secure systems architecture. And each of the individual pathway um, uh, the individual pathway coordinators will go through these the, the individual modules in these pathways in uh, much more detail in their upcoming inductions. So what, what is the context here of cyber skills? It's important, um, as I've mentioned, uh, absolutely cyber skills is closely interacts with Cyber Ireland and it interacts with the um, computer science academic departments um, uh, within the individual uh, higher educational institutions. Uh, but there's also a significant outreach component as part of this. Uh, Cybersecurity Academy is just uh, one element of this initiative, okay? And this is looking at uh, building the base level skills and capabilities in the state, at, uh, in specifically looking at uh, pre-college um, students in, in terms of building that capability. And you can see here there's a wonderful picture of a number of um, uh, research students and PhD candidates that uh, would have aided in um, the, the first running of this, uh, which was uh, during the past summer. And um, you know, it has been hugely positive feedback. And it's um, you know, I'm very proud personally to have been involved in it, but this was very much driven um, by Aoife Long, who isn't on this call, and, and Donna and Jackie. Very, very good initiative. Um, and, and had great impact in terms of um, building more awareness amongst the, the earlier students potentially. Okay, so these are the people that you'll be handing the baton over to eventually. Critically in terms of things that you might see or uh, additional um, cybersecurity skills needs, there's always an open line. Okay, so info at cyberskills.ie, um, allows you to reach out to the cyber uh, skills team uh, to indicate where you might see that there's gaps and there's um, capabilities that we could build in the state to make ourselves better, make ourselves more competitive in this area. Um, many of uh, these additional skills we're probably working on at the moment, uh, and we're heading towards development of that, um, but uh, certainly uh, everybody can contribute and everybody can add and, and let's make us better at this. Now, in terms of general information, so I've given you the overview of the context of where cyber skills is and where it sits 
um, in, in our initiatives across the state to build cybersecurity. So your guiding light as a student is cyberskills.ie. Okay, so if you've not opened browser and are not browsing to it, it, you know, it's worth having that bookmarked for you. Um, there will be general information there um, for you. Uh, this is, if you uh, have been living under a rock in the cybersecurity world, uh, this is the MTU Chair of Cybersecurity, uh, Professor Donna O'Shea, and she's the Cyber Skills Project Lead. Okay, so she was the, the primary, uh, the PI uh, of the project in terms of its initial inception and the uh, proposal um, structure. Project Manager is Jacqueline Kehoe, and she's on the call here as well. Um, so uh, she is the, the uh, core operational person in the project. She makes sure everything works. Um, uh, Jackie, if you just want to introduce yourself briefly. Uh, hi, and welcome everybody to CyberSkills. And I hope you uh, really enjoy next week, the start on your educational journey. And um, obviously I, I'll be in the background available to answer any questions or any issues if you have them. Um, feel free to get in touch. Welcome, everyone. Perfect. Thanks, Jackie. So there, 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 is, a, there is a strong support network there um, uh, for you. Program manager is, is Connor Sheedy. Um, and Connor is uh, you know, managing a lot of the, the program orchestration and activities. Um, I'm not sure if you want to just briefly chime in, Connor. Welcome everybody. So I've been in touch with uh, most of you already through the application process and I'm very excited to, that you're all here today getting started and uh, looking forward to meeting all of your lectures that you're going to meet through this through this session and then in next week getting started with all the all the classes. So great to welcome you all here in person. Perfect. Thanks, Connor. And uh, this this is me. I've, I've already introduced myself. So um... Uh, I'm the, the head of computer science um, at uh, MTU. Um, equally, my colleagues in, in UL, uh, uh, Dr. Tom New, um, in UCD, um, uh, Cormac Doherty, most likely, and uh, in TU Dublin, um, uh, Dr. Anthony Keane, uh, will, will be uh, in the background at our various institutions and their supporting services uh, inside in those uh, departments. Uh, program management, there's a lot of structures that you might not be familiar with. Really, uh, again, your guiding light in a lot of these is reaching out to the, the operations team. So Connor and, and Jackie will be able to guide you on a lot of these processes. But just to, I, I'll run through these really, really quickly just to give you a brief insight into what these are because you might not be aware of uh, precisely what these mechanisms are. Okay, so clearly you can uh, potentially withdraw from a program. I, I don't anticipate many people would like to do that. Uh, there are deferrals. So, you know, if, if for some reason, you have some extenuating circumstance that you know you you, you can't uh, initially take a module uh, during the normal uh, structured time for that module. Just make the program team aware, and they'll they'll figure out whether uh, whether that falls under depending on the time when you raise it, whether you can go for a normal deferral or whether you have to uh, initiate what's called an, an individual extenuating circumstances uh, structure, such as something medical or or something uh, you know, deeply personal. Any information that you would uh, share in the nature of the processing of any of, this, or any of these forms is strictly confidential and would not be shared uh, with anybody uh, outside of the, the direct reviewer. Um, student issues, uh, again, uh, direct to the operationals team um, as, as and when they arise, and timetables. So uh, key dates in terms of semester timetables, so again, uh, it'll be running uh, broadly in structure with the academic semester in, in, in the various institutions. Uh, but these are some of the key dates that you just need to be aware of. And they're in the slide there for informational purposes. I won't, I won't walk through them, but other than to say that there is a reading week uh, potentially in the middle. Uh, there may, or uh, depending on your, the direction coming from your pathway coordinators, uh, there may be a, a number of academic elements to deliver uh, at either the end or the start of the reading week. And they'll make you aware of that as the semester progresses. Um, so semester one is really the one you need to be worried about at this point in time. Uh, and semester two will come along soon enough, don't worry. 
Um, timetables, where do I find it? Uh, cyberskills.ie forward slash for students. And you can see there that there's a timetable drop down. That gives you your, um, uh, your, your days and your times of your specific uh, live lectures uh, of the various different um, lecturers or module instructors. <clears throat> what is a module is probably a, a, a next uh, question you might have. Um, if you're not familiar with the modular structure, a module is the atomic unit of academic delivery, okay? Um, so this is a, a self-contained unit of work uh, within cyber skills and within a, indeed any of the academic programs and the volume of education is expressed in, in hours of student effort, okay? So uh, the average weekly workload for a five credit, okay, which uh, all of your modules fall under that, a five credit module is about seven hours of, of weekly workload. So you, you need to budget your time appropriately for that. That, you, you know, your mileage here can vary hugely. Depending on the nature of your background skill sets, uh, that can scale up and down. Okay, so if you're very unfamiliar with the area of a module theory, it's going to take you potentially longer. And if you're an expert in the area, it's clearly going to take you uh, quite a bit less time. Things to be cognizant of, and this relates back to uh, the level seven or the level eight and level nine designation that I was talking about previously uh, is that there are NFQ, which is the national framework for qualification levels on various different modules. Okay, um, so advanced is the equivalent of level eight. Uh, quite confusingly, the um, uh, the nature of the way the modules are described within M within MTU's infrastructure uh, and those uh, which will be reflected in cyber skills um, are are not uh, does not directly list level eight, level nine, it's advanced or expert, expert being level nine, okay? Um, the, the, a key thing to look at here is that the nature and structure and timing of assessments within your modular descriptor may vary, okay? So again, your pathway coordinator is the person to touch base on the precise timing of any particular assessment in any particular module, but certainly the modular descriptors give you a good meaty understanding of what's, what's gonna happen in that module, okay? Um, be conscious of uh, the, uh, the type of assessment that you have here, whether it's a, a written report or a project. And again, uh, as I said, these can vary slightly. So uh, the assessment descriptor should give you a good idea of what that assessment is. But, you know, again, this may vary on a modular basis. And again, your, your pathway coordinator is the person to talk to. Assessment within cyber skills is, is coursework only. <clears throat> you have a 40 percent pass mark across all modules uh, and every uh, component of assessment material uh, is reviewed by an external examiner, okay? So there's, there's always a, at least two pairs of eyes uh, looking on your assessment material, okay? And your module mark then is, is, finalized, or is finalized and progressed through the normal assessment structure um, that's, uh, that's already in place, okay? So there's a, a very clear defined structure there. There is an appeals process. And again, your pathway coordinators will make you aware of that when and if it is appropriate to do so. Uh, late submission policy is, uh, and this is across all pathways and all modules. Okay, so um, if uh, your particular assessment is up to one week late, uh, you will be docked 10 marks. If it's up to two weeks late, you'll be docked 20 marks. And if it's over two weeks late, uh, it may not be accepted under normal circumstances unless you have uh, an individual extenuating circumstance uh, you know an IEC form submitted that has been approved that must be approved um, by the program manager okay so that that is a, a more serious affair so please don't be late with your assessments it's not a good idea um, uh, the award type that you're you're going on your various individual pathways is called an SPA in MTU nomenclature uh, it has uh, different, uh, it is uh, called different types of things in uh, different academic institutions, okay? Um, there is not a classification to this award, it's pass-fail, okay? And <clears throat> the, the credit uh, it, it can apply, you can apply the credit that you will obtain from this award into uh, other academic programs within the partner institutions. So what I mean by that, uh, is that if you complete, uh, say, 15 credits on a particular pathway, 
uh, here in cyber skills, uh, you, there will be a mechanism in place for you to check that 15 credits out when doing an MSc in cybersecurity within MTU, for example. Uh, there's a number of IT supporting services that are available for you. Use them if you need them, okay? And if you're not sure, uh, again, contact the operationals team. We're here to make you succeed. We want you to um, have a good experience as a student and um, not to be caught up in, in uh, potentially minor technical issues. <clears throat> uh, there are, uh, there's one link here that's really important, mycit.ie. I know that the, the, the website needs to update. Um, this gives you general IT resources provided by MTU. Okay, so this gives you a lot of insight into uh, general important information, uh, how to log into Canvas, uh, you know, kind of your final results, how you view those, and it goes through details on that, uh, as well as having uh, FAQs on, on various different processes and procedures. Um, <clears throat> RPL is a, another uh, one of these procedures that you need to be aware of. So you can use existing um, either uh, you know, experiential or uh, academic prior learning as a means by which to um, uh, you know, uh, bank in some credits into particular pathways. You need to contact the program manager in this. The process is not simple, it's complex. Um, so I would uh, advise you to only go down this pathway if you're uh, very, very sure that you've achieved all of the learning outcomes of a particular module. So it's uh, question time. So if folks want to ask questions in the Q&A answer box um, uh, or the Q&A box uh, for a written question, um, if you want to raise your hand, I cannot see participants uh, with my current view as a panel member, unfortunately. So hopefully uh, Jackie or um, George or, or sorry, Jackie or Connor could manage this for me. And uh, if you want to open, uh, after you raise your hand and if you move forward to ask a question, introduce yourself and uh, hopefully I can answer anything that crops up. So are there questions? Uh, uh, Connor or, or Jackie, if somebody can make me aware if there are questions in the Q&A box. Yeah. So there is the one first, in the Q&A. Yeah, the first question coming in is, is the canvas where all the lecture notes are kept? And uh, I think the answer to that is yes. Yes, yeah. certainly, yeah. Connor, are we, any of us can answer that question. The answer there is yes, canvas is where the canvas in terms of at a modular level, uh, canvas is your guiding light. Okay, so you will receive announcements, um, your, your lecture content will be in there, um, any links, any appropriate material will be in there. Um, so you, you need to be checking that on a regular basis. It's also a good place to keep in, in contact with your lecture through the chat facilities. And uh, it's how you'll be scheduling your, your live lectures through the, the Zoom. Um, integration there which would be demonstrated a little bit later on by by um, um in one of the later technical sessions um so if we we'll move on to the next question or is there any other questions does anybody want to raise their hand or turn on their microphone sean the next question is sim is it similar to ul ul sulis and i can i can answer that since i've used ul sulis it's very similar some of the structures look a bit different, but it's uh, extremely similar to UL Sulis. See, this is, this is the advantage of a multi-institutional uh, initiative of this nature. Uh, we, we can probably answer uh, any questions <laughs> coming from any academic institution or, or somebody who's been in any of the academic institutions. Um, uh, next question, if somebody wants to um, raise it. Again, apologies, I can't see the, the Q&A at this point in time. Oh, uh, I can, it seems, no. Um, uh, has the application form for disability help opened yet uh, for new students? Um, I do not believe this is the case, okay? So for MTU, I don't believe the, the application form for DSS, um, uh, as it might be known to some of you, um, is is open at this point in time. Um, uh, Connor or Jackie will make you aware once that process um, is available to you as a student. Uh, will there be a recording for this session available to rewatch? Uh, yes, uh, this session is being recorded. 
uh, and will be available to you as a, a student uh, to watch in, in your own time or to go back over any components that I might have um, described. Um, so are there any other questions for students? There's one other in the chat. Uh, oh, I can see that now. Thanks very much. Uh, will we be getting an account created on the CIT website for course materials and communications? Yes, uh, that's Canvas. That Canvas is what's called the LMS or the Learning Management System. Um, so that is a system through which uh, your various different modular lectures, so module being that atomic unit of academic delivery, that's the system through which those lecturers will communicate material with you. Okay, so it's it's a it's, it's a really good system actually. It has uh, embedded in uh, discussion forums and a whole pile of additional features. So um, uh, and that'll be detailed in a later session. Uh, you know precisely how the Zoom lectures uh, will look and how they'll be put up in a particular module and what to to expect. Okay, so you will have credentials to log into uh, Canvas for that material. So if anybody else has questions or we, I believe we're, we're, we're through the Q and A. Um, if you have questions or if, uh, if additional questions come to mind in the meantime, oh, I see one, one additional question cropping up here. Uh, <laughs> apart from MTU master's courses, would their credit be applicable? Uh, where would the credit be applicable in the future? Is there a way to check who recognized the credits from this pathway? Um, the uh, intention at this point in time is the credit will be applicable across all academic institutions, okay? Um, and uh, you'll, you'll receive additional communications on precisely uh, the mechanics of how you do that in, in any of the individual academic institutions. I defer to Jackie maybe for additional detail on this, and I, I would imagine she'll communicate this in time once, uh, once the Executive Board of Cyber Skills has uh, fully agreed on the nature of how this would work. Is there anything you want to add in there, Jackie, or is that? No, I think you've captured that. And yeah, we will be um, communicating the details of that as they get confirmed. Perfect. I, I see. Uh, again, <laughs> I'll start again. So if any questions come to mind in the meantime, uh, while you're going through the various different pathways, um, I, I'll be closing out this session. Uh, at the end, after George gives a you know, very interesting or gives an overview of this, this uh, you know, amazing cyber range that, that's available to you. Um, and so you will have a second opportunity to ask questions. If anything comes to mind that you just you just want to answer tonight. Again, if you if you are looking at this as a recording and you have a question, please feel free to forward it to the operations team. We, we again want to answer any possible questions you might have to clear any possible ambiguity you might have and so that you have as, as good a student experience as is possible. So the next person coming up is Dr. Neely Medja, who you uh, already heard briefly earlier on. And uh, she's the course coordinator for the Secure Software Development um, uh, Pathway. She's gonna give you an overview of the pathway and give you essential information on this particular pathway. Hello, everyone. Uh, somebody from the host team needs to give me availability to the camera. I don't at the moment. Yeah, here I am. Hello. I'll just uh, share the screen. Just a sec. Right, so I am Dr. Anila Mieda and I am the course coordinator for the Secure Software Development Pathway. Can everybody see my screen? No, not yet. Not yet? Let me check that it's... Uh... Okay. Where were we? I just want to say thanks very much to Sean for the introduction. And he'll be back later to answer any more questions or you can submit them to any of the rest of us as well in the meantime. Can you see my screen now? Yep, perfectly. Okay, perfect. So now it's working. Right, so uh, I'm the coordinator for the Secure Software Development Pathway. 
So what's the uh, purpose of this pathway? Uh, you heard a uh, very good capture from Dr. Sweeney. And uh, in essence, this uh, pathway is for developers, right? Actually, it's, uh, if you see here in the screen, it actually, it maps uh, to the corresponding NIST, NICE framework roles of software developer and secure software assessor. Right, I'm sure all of you have heard about uh, red team roles and blue team roles, right? And also of the purple team idea. It's where the red team, the attackers and the uh, blue team, the defense team cooperate together. So a lot of uh, this pathway looks at this purple view of the world, right? And uh, it looks at it from both the dev team, the developer team in uh, some modules, and also goes closer to the secure software assessor role in some other modules. Okay, let's see in semester one. So you have two modules, the cybersecurity standards and risk and the secure software development. And then in semester two, which is uh, far away away at the moment, uh, you have security assurance and practical cryptography. All of them are five credits modules. Right, let's look at them one at a time. So the module cybersecurity standards and risk, it's uh, delivered by Dr. Lubna Luxmi Dirani. And what is this uh, module about? Well, uh, it basically, it provides you the tools to understand the security obligations of an organization, right? So here in this module, you'll be looking at the different standards and laws, regulations that govern uh, the land for a better word, right? So you will be looking at uh, risk assessment. You'll be looking at risk metrics. How do you actually assess risk? And uh, with all that said, okay, there are a lot of standards and regulations in place, but it's also very important to understand, okay, but how does that in, you know, apply to me? How does that implement apply to my organization? So that angle as well, you will hear from the, you know, Dr. Luxmi Dirani. So how do you actually align a, like the required strategy of security to your real business needs? or to your company's business needs, okay? So uh, part of this module as well, you'll be looking at the different types of risks in, in a business, the operational risk, all, all types of different risks, and actually look at it from a perspective of how do you make these all types of risks converge into a single framework, okay? So that is uh, one of the modules for which you'll be in the, hand, the very capable hands of Dr. Lubna Luxmi Dirani. The next module is uh, secure software development. And uh, it's, I, I deliver this module, okay? So in, to some extent, I wish that that secure in front of software development was a misnomer. Uh, the idea that we have to add secure in front of software development shows that actually something is not as it should be, because surely, you know, security should be part of any software development course. This is how it should be. The reality is that uh, universities in the whole planet, not just in, in Ireland, we do not teach usually security as part of our software development courses. So we look at uh, how we how we best develop software. We look at quality, different quality perspectives, but it does not extend to the actual secure security concepts. And this is where this module comes in. Again, if you remember what I was talking about, the uh, team, the purple team perspective, the idea is that you take this perspective and we say we push left. What does it mean? We bring it to the beginning of developing the software. So the idea is that what can we do that we actually develop it right? Okay. So we'll be looking at different, uh, all the different concepts that we need to be aware, especially for the uh, modern applications of today. Okay. And we'll look at it from a practical perspective, from a, you know, what you need as, you know, working in industry today, what do you need to be aware of in terms of uh, securing your software? 
and part of the module as well, we'll get to use the cyber range that you heard from uh, Sean for, from Dr. Sweeney. Uh, and we will use that environment to, to do a, a number of really cool labs that allows you to actually see the concepts that we actually cover in the lecture and go and, and, uh, uh, and use them in practice. Uh, look for certain vulnerabilities in the codes and so on and so forth. And you'll see a presentation at the end from uh, George, from uh, Dr. George Mahoney, uh, that you'll see a brief introduction of this environment. It's a really, really cool environment. It, it helps you uh, quite um, nicely uh, go through the labs with a lot of support in a very, very well, very well uh, developed uh, uh, environment. And it, it, it removes from you all that sort of uh, technical frustration that uh, you need to figure out if something is not working. Is it because I did not configure it right? Or is it because something, uh, some mm, version of my operating system is clashing with something in that new uh, app that I'm trying to develop or trying to investigate? So um, I hope you really enjoy that part of the course. Right. And this brings us to the next semester. So. Uh, the, uh, one of the modules that you are taking in semester two is practical cryptography. And this is uh, delivered by Dr. Hazel Murray. Okay, And you will uh, hear from uh, doc Dr. Murray in, uh, in a presentation for a different pathway today. Okay, So for example, if uh, uh, you heard in the previous module developed, uh, delivered even from me in the software, uh, in the secure software development module that, okay, when it's not perhaps uh, a good case of jumping and uh, uh, developing your own cryptography and why that's not a good idea. Here in this module, you actually look at the cryptography uh, closer by, okay? You look at the different uh, uh, algos of algorith algorithms of uh, cryptography. And uh, you also uh, look at uh, how do you appraise what is actually appropriate uh, uh, cryptography to be used for a specific uh, app, let's say you are developing, or what is the, uh, how do you appraise the cryptography in a specific framework that you might be using in your development? And, uh, you know, cryptography has a strong mathematical element uh, in it, but you don't need to have a you know, degree in uh, pure mathematics to take the module. So you are in very capable hands of Dr. Murray here that she'll, uh, this course is delivered in a way which is very accessible to, to you to actually get, get to know the concepts or uh, reacquaint yourself to some of the concepts. What does it mean uh, to encrypt and uh, what does it mean to hash and also look at the different uh, um, types of encryptions we can use. And then uh, it's the final module of semester two, which is security assurance. Here, if we continue talking about that, the purple team uh, mentality, we are close, We are going a bit closer to what you can call a more classical uh, cybersecurity uh, role. So here we are talking about a secure software assessor. And here the idea is that uh, while uh, before we were looking closer to how do you develop software, right? So how do you develop it to be secure? Here we look at uh, how do you analyze uh, uh, a software system? How do you analyze it from the security point of view? How do you elicit the security, the security requirements and what tools or what methods you can use to do this and so on and so forth. So basically this is, these are the, uh, four modules that are that form this pathway. So any questions? Uh, now I can't see any questions. I'm in Sean's predicament that I can't see any questions coming in. Uh, we don't have any yet anyway. Um, if you scroll down the bottom, you might be able to see the options. Yeah. Okay, now I can see the, perhaps people want to keep the questions to the end. I can't see any other yeah, questions. So we can 
Okay, so we can move forward. Probably move on to the next. Yeah, so we can move uh, forward uh, to Dr. George O'Mahony, that it's the coordinator for the secure network operations. So I will stop sharing the screen. Yeah. So can, can you all see my screen? Thanks, Anila. Thanks, yep. Anila. Um, just checking, can you see my screen there now? Yeah, we can see your screen. Here. Cool, excellent. So hello everyone. Um, so my name is uh, George Romani and I'll be your course coordinator for Secure Network Operations Pathway and teaching uh, some of the modules in this pathway as well. So I guess just to start off, we'll kind of, I just want to cover the logistics uh, of the module. So um, in all of the modules is significant emphasis on learn by doing and where we're going to adopt practical hands-on approach to learning where possible. Um, and a lot of the ways where applicable, we're going to use that cyber range tool, which I will demonstrate in a, in a live demo towards the end of this orientation. There's 20 credits in this pathway, so there's four or five credit modules delivered fully online over two semesters, and you can register for the full cert or the individual modules as, as desired. How does this kind of pathway relate to this NICE framework? So it's closely mapped to the work role of the network operations specialist. So we kind of want to look at the operate and maintain of network services. So this includes how do we install, configure, test, operate, maintain, and manage our network securely. And this includes your hardware components like firewalls and all of the other software that permit the sharing and transmission of information over your network. And we will look at that through four separate modules. But what is the main aim then of looking at this uh, work role and how to apply it to this pathway? So the main aim is what we want to do is provide cybersecurity skills required to securely manage our networks. And the mainly you want to do is how do you securely configure network systems and services, and then also cultivate a deep appreciation of cybersecurity risks to these networks. And also how do we develop uh, an appreciation for instant investigation techniques? So how do you know what an anomaly is and how do you identify malicious behavior um, over our network? And how we get how you're going to gain these skills then is through the completion of the specifically designed modules that were developed with specific mapping to NIST NICE KSAs, which are knowledge, skills, and abilities. And then we're also going to do a lot of practical labs that utilize the cyber range. So you'll see later on when I go through it in the demo um, that it's a very useful tool tool. And Anila has mentioned that as well previously. Um, and basically, just for you have it in your head for later on, a cyber range is a controlled interactive environment where you can basically practice and learn how to detect and mitigate cyber attacks using the same type of equipment and tools that you will actually have in a job. So we can do everything from small labs where you get used to certain tools all the way up to real world attack situations where you actually have to detect and mitigate an attack in a live network. So as part of this uh, pathway, you have four, four modules, so two in semester one and two in semester two. Um, in semester one, we're going to look at cybersecurity standards and risks, which Anelia has already covered, and then we'll have secure network systems. In semester two, you're going to look at secure network services and log file and event analysis. So what's a very nice thing uh, to mention here is that you will learn very important skills and knowledge from each individual module, but they actually complement each other very well. Um, as you see in the screen, is just a list of the learning outcomes that you can get on the MTU website for each of the modules. And basically, for a good example of how they complement each other is if you look at the secure network systems, which you will look at in semester one, you're going to learn about intrusion detection and response systems. But to really truly develop your own intrusion detection system, you need to understand what legitimate behavior is on your network. So you look at legitimate behavior, what you see in a firewall, for example, or over VPN in secure network systems, but this is going to be improved by your analysis of what services are going to be running on your network and how are they legitimate. And all of the log files that your hardware and your services produce, you need to understand what's legitimate in those log files and what isn't and what's malicious. So by looking at all of the modules together, you get a good idea of how they kind of complement each other and you can develop the skills um, in a greater extent once you do each module after another. 
So I'm just going to look at the three modules that haven't been covered uh, to date. So in semester one, we're uh, going to look at secure network systems. Um, and I will be lecturing this module uh, this semester. And we'll be looking at a couple of main concepts would be cyber threats and vulnerabilities um, in a network's security architecture, firewalls and zoning, encryptions and VPN, intrusion detection and prevention systems, and then some network system performance um, mechanisms as well. But this is all basically there to to develop skills that you can apply and use various computer protection components and then so you can operate and interpret information collected from these network security equipment and tools to implement a secure architecture and what i mean by that is that you will identify especially in the labs what legitimate behavior on a firewall looks like and what malicious behavior looks like and you'll be able to understand the difference between the two and how to detect and mitigate when you find something that's not supposed to be there and the same thing you know, looks at how to build up a VPN access, how what's legitimate, what isn't, um, and we look at that in into intrusion detection systems and system performance as well. Uh, in semester two, we're going to then delve into secure network services. So we're going to look at some of the most um, commonly used services and networks, uh, domain name system, lightweight directory access protocol, and the rest of them that you listed here, and a really big focus of this uh, module is the difference between what security you need to put on when it's wired connections and what's different when it's wireless. So that's why we have Wi-Fi there at the end, um, because there is a big difference between how you're going to protect something over a wire compared to over a wireless um, network where that wireless channel is open to anyone with suitable equipment. So the focus here is on the concepts needed to implement these services securely and also to the troubleshooting skills that if something goes wrong with these services, you'll understand what to do and how to find a problem. And that links in quite well to the, to the next module and the final one of this pathway, which is log file and event analysis. So all of these systems and services uh, leave behind logs uh, and log files. And what we're going to do in this module in hopefully a kind of a very interesting way is look at log file access and analysis look at log management systems and security information and event management tools with the goal of doing instant investigation. And that is to, um, in an instant where performance might have dropped or else there's malicious activity. So we want to develop the necessary skills and the mindset, which is very important uh, for using these log files for cybersecurity and instant investigation. And then we'll also use this to go for system performance issues. So from all these modules, I think they link quite well together um, and you get a kind of a good understanding of how to securely set up a network and understand what's actually going on in the different areas of your network. Um, so yeah, I think that's just my brief overview. Um, so if, I'll happy take any questions if, if you have them. So I think I have to stop sharing as well to see any questions coming through. Yeah, we don't seem to have any at the moment either. Yeah. We can probably move on to Hazel. Right. So thanks very much for that, George. No worries. And we'll speak to you again anyway um, after. And if anyone thinks of any questions, please put them into the chat or, or in the Q&A. Or raise your hand if you'd like to actually say something. Hi, Hazel. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just going to start sharing my screen. Cool. I can see that. Thanks very much. So, yeah, I'm. Uh, Hazel Murray, I'm going to be the course coordinator for the Secure Systems Architecture module. Um, so I'm just going to begin by giving an overview of this path, oh sorry, Secure Systems Architecture pathway, um, which is confusing because within it we have a module with the same name. So, um, so firstly, the purpose of this pathway is to provide you with the knowledge and skills required to perform the role of a systems architect at a larger medium-sized organization. And as a systems architect, you're in charge of 
uh, making sure that the necessary security requirements are in place to protect an organization and their business processes. Um, so in this module, we have two first, sorry, in this pathway, we have two first semester modules and one second semester module. So I'll start by going through the two first semester modules, and these will be taught by myself and Dr. Muzafar Rao. So the first one is information security architecture. And the idea of this module is to understand the requirements, governments, governance and management systems that underpin an effective security architecture. So we will basically identify like the regulatory obligations, customer level obligations, business obligations, and then um, identify the relevant risks uh, to those or for those, and then put in place security controls that can mitigate these risks uh, for your organization. So um, that's the first module we'll be doing. And then the second module is more specifically on the cryptography and protocols. So when we say that we want to mitigate risks, we put control measures in place. And essentially, the cryptography and security protocols are those control measures that we'll usually be putting in place for at least some of them. So this module is quite interesting. It's based on a ground up approach. So we essentially start with the fundamental mathematics that all cryptographic systems are based on. But we do know that people aren't coming from a maths background, so this is made as accessible as possible. Um, but once we've covered the maths fundamentals, this allows us to understand the workings of the cryptographic ciphers and algorithms. And with these cryptographic algorithms, we can then understand and build security protocols. And the module finishes with uh, you applying these security protocols in an information system and describing the strengths and shortcomings of your own implementation. And the idea is that because this module goes from a low level all the way up to the high level, as a security architect, you'll be able to understand the implications and importance of each security decision you make. Um, so that's our second module in first semester. So in second semester, we just have one module. It's called S Secure Systems Architecture, and it's the Pathways namesake. Um, so this module basically brings together everything we've covered so far. And it will also focus specifically on the key technologies for secure systems architecture. So we'll look at and review and compare different architectural frameworks. Um, we'll evaluate uh, security architecture and networking technologies. And we'll go into more detail on permissions and the role of authentication in access controls. And we will critically assess different security technologies and products available. So everything from firewalls to um, honeypots, uh, network traffic analysis, anything like that, we'll assess those and look at what products are available. Um, and then so you'll be asked to um, appraise the security of a data network and identify policies, processes, and practices that need to be adopted in order to secure that network. And then finally, um, you'll recognize how security controls fit into system design and development and complementing Anila's point that it's really important when designing anything to have security in mind. Um, so that's our last module. Any questions? Okay, so we have a question from Sebastian about any prerequisites in terms of programming languages and tooling like operating systems for the crypto cryptography course and its labs. Yeah, perfect. So in terms of programming, the um, we'll generally just use Python. The idea of the programming that you'd be doing in the cryptography course is really just to cement your understanding. So like, say we introduce like a new um, cryptographic cipher, your challenge might be to um, like implement that cipher using Python. And it just shows that you understand how the cipher works. We're not looking for like highly complicated programming or like abilities. It's just to demonstrate that you understand how it works. Um, so yeah, the prerequisite is probably just a functional understanding of how to use Python. 
but if you don't have it and you have any other programming language, you should be able to pick it up in a few days to know enough um, in order to do the module. That helps. <laughs> That was a very good answer, Hazel. Thanks for that. Okay, well, we don't seem to have any other questions. Um, we're actually running 15 minutes early. It's unusual for anything, <laughs> especially online. Um, we might hand over to Shane, um, if you're there, Shane. Sure. Can you hear me there? Okay. Yeah. yeah, we can. And Shane's going to introduce the, the LMS and, and all the tools we're going to use from the Technology Enhanced Learning Unit. Two seconds there now. Okay. Can you just confirm you can see that? Okay. It should be the yeah, Department we of can Technology. See this. Okay, look, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Shane Cronin. I'm a uh, lead uh, learning technologist, e learning developer in the Department of Technology Enhanced Learning here. So, we would have worked with the program team with all the lectures that we're talking to you today uh, and the coordinating team on developing the kind of the self directed course content for the Cyber Skills project. Um, so, I'm going to go through you're quite quickly now um, a sort of an overview of the technology involved in delivering um, that kind of self-directed learning, but also facilitating any live uh, delivery as well. So just before I do that, this is a useful graphic that we, we usually show people to just talk about the e-learning infrastructure available uh, in MTU. Uh, Kirk. So we have Canvas in the center, which is your, your VLE your virtual learning environment or your learning management system. And uh, as mentioned earlier, it would function quite similarly to, to, to other learning management systems. You have the usual stuff in there. Uh, basically all of your, um, your, uh, your self-directed learning, your assignments, uh, your live uh, classes and everything in between in terms of integrations and stuff uh, will be coming from the Canvas environment there. The two, the main integration though that you'll be aware of quite um, soon into the process of, of beginning um, your, your program would be uh, the Canvas and Zoom integration. So Canvas being the, the, the learning environment uh, has a direct uh, integration that we've um, incorporated into Zoom, which is the live e-learning environment for your live classes. And um, they basically work uh, hand in hand together. So when a live session happens in Canvas, uh, via Zoom, the recordings are then posted back into Canvas. So the CyberSkills virtual learning environment is Canvas. It's, uh, I suppose, the, the CyberSkills project or program has an instance of Canvas that's, uh, that's connected to our main MTU instance. So the only difference for you as students is you, you initially just go in through the, the MTU or CIT instance with your credentials and you'll get directed then directly into the, the CyberSkills instance. Um, all students on this um, on this program will have access directly to that and any other connected services. Um, what you'll be using it for is accessing your course material and those, um, uh, you know, anything in between like assignments, accessing grades and feedback, and and basically using it to get any up to date information on your on your module. So any um, you know upcoming events or activities would be posted in there too. Um, the main URL, and you'll be getting this um, afterwards as well, don't worry, so you, you don't have to, to take note of this or anything, but this URL will take you to what we call the main production instance for, for the university. Um, I'll, show, I'll give you a really quick demonstration in a minute of how it works, but you'll go in here, you use your, your single sign-on credentials, and you'll be directed then into the cyber skills uh, instance of the LMS. One useful app to download is the student app, the Canvas student app, which you can get for iOS and Android. 
Um, the reason for downloading that is it's useful to get push notifications, particularly if your uh, if your lecture has any uh, course updates. Maybe there's a change in schedule or something uh, new to post. You'll get that push to your mobile app, and it's useful for kind of keeping track of track of coursework and so on. I wouldn't use it for everything. Um, obviously, there's a limit to what you can do on mobile, which is why you'd be going into desktop for most of the the stuff but if you're on the go for example you can still use the canvas app to access live um, sessions which will just direct you to uh, the zoom app but um, that's a useful one if you're on the go or if you're not at your office desk or wherever you might be um, with the canvas app you get notifications you get the learning content submissions etc um, one useful thing that we have available to us in the university is 24-7 uh, support, which is uh, what we call tier one support. So if you have any queries at any time, you can go into the help menu and there's a few options there to contact support. There's uh, telephone or web chat uh, or email as well, where you can submit a ticket. Um, and there's also ourselves here in the uh, technology enhanced learning team who can assist in any local matters. Um, in terms of common tasks that you might be doing uh, in every day, I guess you're going to log into Canvas um, as, your, as your main point of entry. You'd be accessing any modules that you're taking. Um, I'll, I'll go through the module interface in a minute. Um, the useful thing about uh, Canvas and the integration with Zoom is your what, what, what we call is auto-provisioned from Canvas into Zoom, so you don't really have to worry about different credentials. Your credentials are all the same. So the credentials you use to sign into your, your student email uh, and into any other systems here are, are, are all the same. Um, you would join your Zoom classes via Canvas, so they'd be advertised or, or posted up into Canvas. And then typically you do the usual stuff that you do in Zoom. So uh, if you're doing any screen sharing or using your mic, you'll need to maybe set that stuff up. But I'm sure uh, at this stage, a lot of you uh, have, um, have that in the bag and, and are well capable of doing that. Um, accessing recordings will be doing via Canvas and, uh, and there's help and support available uh, in the following screens here. So we have some useful tips for remote learning. If you're new to remote learning, uh, they're available on our website, tel.cit.ie. Um, so just some some useful stuff there in terms of um, being an online learner. Uh, again, that 24-7 support, those details are up there for you. Uh, and our own site is a really useful place to look for student articles on, on any aspect of the remote uh, learning options that we have here uh, at MTU Cork. Um, and there's a kind of a knowledge base, a searchable knowledge base there that you can you can access. So I'm sure Connor and Jackie will be, will be sending you some of this material after this induction. But what I wanted to show you really quickly is just to look at what you'll actually be seeing when you uh, when you do enter Canvas. So uh, module rollover, which is I suppose when we uh, create all our modules uh, in the university, has only just taken place. Uh, but you won't really yet have full access to those modules until um, everybody is set up. So that's in train at the moment. But when that is um, when that's done, you'll you'll be made aware of it and you'll be able to log in. You probably currently could log in to Canvas if you have a student account. Um, but this is what it would look like. You log in via cit.instructure.com uh, at, at the beginning. You'll see a list of your modules. This is the module interface here on the left. So you'll have your account your dashboard, your module, and your calendar. And all you need to do is you need to click on the module that you're you're looking to, um, uh, to access, and you'll get to, uh, basically, it just changes color. Your interface is, um, is quite similar. This is the Cyber Skills instance of Canvas. So this whole uh, program has its own instance of Canvas. The branding um, and coloring and stuff changes, but you also have bespoke uh, integrations with the likes of Zoom there. If I do click into a module, you'll get your, your module interface in here. Now, some of this um, obviously isn't populated yet um, because we haven't published it yet, but I'll just show you what the Zoom integration looks like, for example. So we have one scheduled here, um, and what you can do is 
join via Canvas. Now I can't do it because I'm actually delivering this uh, this piece in Zoom. But what it'll, it'll do, it'll just launch uh, the Zoom app on your device, also authenticate, and you're straight into your session. So that's the that, that's the power of the integration. Um, your your recordings, your class recordings are made available in here, and you can have an index of them and access them on demand. Um, and uh, all students uh, within the university also get uh, pro licenses for Zoom, so you can use it for your own uh, use within the university as well. Um, the main area that you'll be interacting with outside of Zoom will be your units. Uh, the units basically are where all of the learning content is hosted. So typically what you'll see is a weekly uh, schedule here or weekly release. So you won't see all of these um units in one go excuse me a second just take some water um so you'll see um a unit uh <clears throat> per week and in each of these you're going to see um your assignments and so on excuse me a sec frog in my throat sorry so um, as you go along, yeah, you'll see each each of your weeks and the content. So your self-based content will be in there, um, your instructor profile and any details to get you started in there. And typically then any kind of uh, wayfinding or pointing to the other parts of the module. You have things like discussions, as Sean mentioned earlier, for, um, you know, for any of the discussions that are to happen outside of uh, live class time. Any of the assignments will be posted in here and will have clear due dates and so on. And your grades area is where you um, you basically get to see what grades are issued for any assignments that you might have been uh, given. Your syllabus, when it is actually populated, will show you any of the uh, items in Canvas that have time uh, related elements to them. So they might be events, they might be uh, assignments, they might be things in your to-do list and you'll see them all populated in there. Other things that you'll get will be your calendar. So it'll be very clear to you what your workload would be over the course of the semester. Um, you'll also see your inbox, which is where you get um, almost like a webmail for your um, for your uh, program and each module gets its own kind of inbox um, your history has to do with the things that you've done in canvas so if you've submitted an assignment that'll get time stamped in there and the help then is where you can access your your help resources as i just said so i, I think that's pretty much it from from my end um, what we can do is we can share with you um afterwards any of the the links that you will need but i i think in terms of access it's pretty straightforward you just need your your one set of credentials uh you log into canvas and once you're in canvas you get kind of provisioned into any of the tools that you need um and there's plenty of help resources we have on our own end um to to assist you in that including the the guide to remote uh, learning so i can take any questions also if anyone has them um but hopefully that should be straightforward enough for you guys thanks for that shane so uh, anyone any questions before we move on to the cyber range which will be presented by uh, dr george omani And feel free to write your questions in as the presenter is presenting in the Q&A box, and they'll be able to answer it um, later on when they finish their pre presentation. So we might hand over now to Dr. George O'Mahony, who's going to have a few words about the cyber range. Cool, so um, can you see my screen? No, again. Yeah. Cool. So I just have a few slides before I go into the live demo, because I know we've been talking about Cyber Range a lot today, and I just want to make sure everyone kind of has an idea of what it actually is uh, before we go into the demo. So Cyber Range is, for all intents and purposes, it's a virtual environment that can be used to train cybersecurity professionals to develop software or to do some cybersecurity research. And what's the important thing is all complex IT environments can be simulated and then you can practice handling of specific real world scenarios, including any latest threat that comes out. 
Um, what CyberRange does is it creates this controlled interactive environment where we can simulate different uh, cybersecurity incidents or different tools to be used or different skills to be learned. So basically uses a practice to learn how to detect and mitigate cyber attacks. And these will all be done using equipment and tools that you'll have on the job. Um, and another really nice thing is that the worst possible attacks in an IT infrastructure our networks or software platforms and applications can all be simulated. So you can actually understand what happens if you're under one of the worst possible attacks out there or something even a small um, phishing attack even. So you can do both ends of the spectrum. Um, but you might say, why use one? Um, and the, the big thing really is as the cyber threats kind of evolve and we need more and more people to be fully trained and more people are trying to recruit and hire trained security professionals, Realistically, having a degree in cybersecurity is usually not enough um, as you need the skills to mitigate these attacks, which you can only get from realistic breach scenarios. And you're never really going to want to be doing that training on the job because that's where real data is going to be exposed. So that's where CyberRange comes in and that's the solution because we can do all the necessary training we can in the sandbox environment where we can look at real attacks, real scenarios, so you can get up to speed and up and gain the skills you need to actually mitigate something in the real world. And we're lucky, or just before we go on to it, we, uh, your cyber range to be monitored. So the cyber range, each lab or exercise or attack scenario in the cyber range has its own progress and performance. So there's its own grading system. And in that, you know, to get up the grades with specific objectives and skills to complete. And I'll show this in the demo. And these, these results then will be linked back to Canvas. And we can also have live instructor help um, for each lab as well can be provided, which is a very nice thing. So we can actually look into the background of the lab, find out where the, the learner is having issues and, and help them through it. So the actual cyber range infrastructure we're using is being provided by Siren, which is a next generation cyber range um, where there's real tools, real attacks and real scenarios that are all in our play. And it's already been used to train cybersecurity professionals and students all over the world, including people in charge of some of the most sensitive networks in the world. So this Siren infrastructure is, is a really world-class uh, cyber range, um, which you will just access through Canvas. So just like Zoom, you don't have to worry about other credentials. Um, once you open up Canvas, uh, there'll be a lab there, say, say Siren Lab 1, um, for, for each module, and then you can just access through it. So you just need access to a web browser. Um, so I'm gonna go through a live demo of it of it now. Um, I'm just gonna open up here. So I just have it open up in Chrome at the moment. So this is gonna be just slightly different than what you see. You'll see it through Canvas, but you'll see the same screen once you get there. So, so this is your dashboard. So when you log in, um, you'll see, you'll have a name up here in the top, right hand corner and this is where you're going to see your recently accessed courses or access courses and what other courses or labs you're due to have um to when you go let's say we're going to start with the getting started with siren uh, lab which is what most people in cyber skills is going to start with this is going to be your introductory lab because it explains most of the steps that you're going to require for every other lab and it's a nice starting point so each lab has this introductory page, which kind of walks you through what the lab is supposed to do. So in this getting started with Siren, you just want to get used to the Siren inter in interface, sorry, and also teach some basics of, of Linux and Windows PowerShell. It gives you a list of the goals of what you want to do. So each of these goals then is what you need to do to get the points and to get the, to get the grading. Um, and I'll show you what happens when one of these goals is achieved in the demo in a minute. It also kind of gives you an idea of what the exercise environment is. So this is quite a simple environment. It's three computers talking to each other. It then allows you to launch the exercise. It can view your results. And it also allows you to download the instructions so you can look at them offline if you, if you so wish. So if we dive into it there, uh, this is your, going to be your cyber range interface. So once you launch the exercise, you'll be given two options. Um, an issue will have one which will just be to start the exercise, but you can pause it and that will save it for 14 days. So you can do some of the lab on a Monday, pause it and come back to it any other day of the week. 
Um, and the only difference is when you open up and launch the exercise, you'll be given two options. It will be resume pause lab or to restart the lab from, from scratch. So that pause button here is going to be very useful for those to, to do your time management where you can do a couple of, um, you know, do an hour of the lab, pause it and come back to it. Uh, to end the exercise, this is when you have all of the goals completed. Um, you can end the exercise and then that will be your, your round of that lab done and finished with. Here, you're helping your goals. We'll walk you through your help files here and also each of the goals you need to do. So you can either follow along on the right hand side of the screen or you can just pick which goal you want to do first. You can also go full screen um, if you so wish. And in the viewing here, this is an important tab. Uh, this allows you to access the different computers that you have access to as the learner. So in some of the labs, you'll see that there's multiple other computers um, in the network, but you might only have access to one or two, or you might have access to all of them. But under this viewing tab here is the ones that you have access to, and these are the only ones you'll need to complete the lab as well. This gives you an elapsed time, so mostly a lot of these labs um, suggest two hours of independent uh, work to get through it and then also here you can just use your keyboard commands here to, um, to put them through just in case you close a tab for example that happened to me alt f4 close my tab once or twice and so you can just press alt here and that will send it to your virtual machine in the background when you're doing the lab on the left hand side is what you're going to see your active virtual machine which one you you're running and up here then it says computer c so this is computer c's um virtual machine and on the right hand side is where you're going to see all of your um, lab instructions and help files. So you can see that I have one of the goals completed and if I go up here I see it here I got to get familiar with sign interface I have that now completed and now I'm going to get familiar with the Windows PowerShell so this is what this uh, objective is a goal and I've completed, just to show you what happens when you complete an objective, I followed all of the instructions here. So I switched to computer C and I logged in using the log information provided at the beginning of the, of the help file. I started PowerShell, made a directory scripts. I went into scripts, made a notepad file of hello.ps1 and they've echoed hello out and I've, actually, and I've run it. So the last bit to do, all I have to do to finish this objective is to run the same PowerShell script and then just output it to a text file. And then if I cat the output file, you'll see this is what pops up. So this is the important thing you need to look for at the end of each um, objective is that this pop-up screen happens and this is what tells you you've completed all of that goal and all of what's required to complete that objective. And then you can continue the exercise and advance the help, which goes on to the next objective, or you can just continue if you want to play around some more with that objective. Um, these are very just simple um, objectives in this uh, first opening lab, because it's just an introduction. Um, and you can see the next one then will just be very similar. It'll be remote login and file, and you just follow the instructions and you understand what's going on. And at the end of it, you'll see once you've completed all objectives, you'll see a screen pop up that says congratulations, you've completed it, and then it'll give you the option to end the exercise. So you can end the exercise once the objectives are completed, but you can also play around some more and understand the tools that are being used. Because you're in a sandbox environment, um, you can't do any damage, but you, you know, so you can spend extra time if needed to work, understand a tool, understand how the firewall works, for example, or understand how a VPN works or understand what the cryptography system is running. So you can do more time than the lab requires if you so wish. But just to give you an idea of um, some of the other ones that are available. So this is another lab that's there. So this is a more, I suppose, complex lab that's available. So it's an introductory uh, lab to intrusion detection system configuration with SNART. So SNART is an open source, widely used um, IDS. And as you see, it's a little bit more advanced about what you're trying to do in this lab. It gives you the goals, it gives you, provides you some prerequisites, and then it kind of gives you what network infrastructure you're looking at, which is a little bit more advanced than what we've just seen. 
So in this case, you have a, a public network with an attacker and a normal user. This NORT um, IDS is in line um, between the public and the private network. And in this lab, you'll have same thing, launch exercise, view results, and you can look at your instructions offline. So this one is more advanced, but this is also a two hour lab. Um, and if we go to an even a different one, we'll look at a conduct a data leak investigation. So this is an exercise, which is a little bit more advanced than what a lab is, but as you can see as well from your kind of network interface here, you see it's a lot more involved than what we've been used to. But again, the only difference between this exercise and the labs is that there's a quiz at the end. So there might be some um, points along the way that you need to make um, note of. And similar then, there is attacks, which are full-blown attack scenarios. Um, and for example, for those of you who are doing the secure network systems module uh, this semester, we're going to start by looking at a bunch of different labs. And then eventually the end goal is going to be to do a real-world attack scenario. Um, which is going to be detect and mitigate uh, a malware attack. So that just gives you a brief overview, I think, of what the cyber range can do um, and its interface. Um, so most of you will probably end up doing that, uh, getting started with Siren Lab first, just so you can get used to it. And then we'll start doing some more interesting and uh, uh, I suppose harder labs as time goes on. So um, if you have any questions, I'll, uh, I'll happily take them now as well. Great, thanks for that, George. We've got a question that asks, can we use Siren to take another course exercise outside of our pathway? So the only um, Siren exercise that you'll have uh, access to are the ones we provide you through Canvas. So for each module, you'll only be able to do the assigned labs that you'll get on on each module. Thanks for that, George. Any other questions? Please feel free to write them in the Q&A box. And uh, if anybody wants to open up their mic and talk, please feel free to put up your hand um, and we'll enable your microphone to ask any questions in person. Um, if there aren't any questions now, what we'll probably do is hand back to Sean McSweeney for the closing. Okay, thanks very much, Connor, and uh, thanks, George. That's very interesting. Um, so uh, we've come, we've come to the end of the induction evening, folks. Um, uh, thank you very much for uh, participating in this event. I hope you found it very informative, and you understand the nature of your pathway, uh, the context of cyber skills at this point in time. Um, you have a, a fairly detailed understanding of the technical infrastructure that's available to you on your pathway uh, while you complete your studies with us. And you now understand or know uh, who to contact if you have issues uh, as a student on this pathway. Now, uh, if anybody has any final questions, I'll happily answer them uh, at this point in time. Um, so I'll give you, uh, whoever might uh, want to ask a question in a few moments, just to raise your hand, turn on your microphone, or um, pop a question either in the chat or Q&A. Um, and if I receive no questions in the next uh, you know, 20 seconds or so, um, have a good evening. And um, you know, uh, best of luck in the coming uh, weeks and months uh, on your pathway. And I'm sure you'll find it um, you know, very fulfilling. And we, we hope you enjoy the experience uh, as a student and it develops the skill sets that you want to develop. So I see we've, we've no questions. So good night all, and thank you very much for participation. Thanks very much, everyone. Good evening.